Hi everyone, this is a tutorial on how to animate a glitch frame by frame. I'm using TV Paint 11 Pro, but I'm not going to be doing anything fancy with TV Paint's effects, and what tools I do use will have their equivalent in other animation programs like Toon Boom, Flash, Photoshop, and Critter. I'm going to walk you through a few ways on how I glitch text, a simple line drawing, and then a coloured character. My canvas is 1920 by 1080 pixels and 25 frames a second. So there's a few ways to do it and a glitch is one of my favourite things to animate. It's very quick and you can have a lot of fun with it. To start off, I'm going to animate some text. This first drawing will be your normal frame. I'm using a white round brush on a solid black background and depending on how long you want your text to remain normal is how long you'll extend this first drawing for. Usually when I'm making a loop like this, I'll have a normal drawing last for around 12 frames, have three or four glitch frames on twos before I then copy the normal drawing to the end and extend it again to make a loop. For my glitch frames, I'll use a normal frame as a base using the onion skin, which is called the light table tool in TV Paint to refer back. I'll make the letters more angular and larger than the original writing so there's a noticeable jump between the two. With each glitch frame I'll stretch the letters in different directions but still keep each recognisable. Be sure to play it through so you can check and see if you like how it looks. If you want to you can make a new layer and add in extra drawings that glitch at the same time as the text but disappear when it returns to normal. A lot of the stuff I like to animate is fantasy based, so glitches are great for creepy things like eyes and symbols. Now another way to make a glitch, rather than drawing out every frame by hand in one colour, is to use the select and move tools. This way is very quick and I really like the way it looks. I use this one for logos, text and simple line drawings. After drawing an eye once, I'll copy it five more times. Four of them will be the glitch frames and the fifth will be another normal frame so it can be extended and make a nice loop. On the first glitch frame I'll use the select tool to highlight random areas of the eye. I'll then use the move tool to drag them from their original position. How far away from the main drawing you want them to be is up to you. I'll do this for each of the glitch frames and then play it through. In most of the references for glitches I've found, they use red and blue alongside the original colour of the drawing and this is really easy to do. I'll start off by duplicating my layer and turn the drawings red. In TV Paint I'll do this by locking the layer transparency and use the filled stroke. Using a bucket tool or a large round brush works just as well too. After that, I'll offset the red layer one frame to the right and repeat the process for the blue layer, though I'll offset that one frame to the left. I'll make sure the first and last frames of the red and blue layers match up with the original so I have a nice clean loop, and then I'll play it through to see how it looks. Now for the third example, to animate a glitch for a character is a bit more complex and also a bit more fun, I think. My roughs are usually very rough if I'm working on my own, but if I have to pass it on to someone else, I'm definitely a bit neater than this. I start sketching out my character roughly in their normal pose and then I start on the glitch frames. For a character glitch, it's all about exaggeration and twisting the design so it looks stretched, yet still recognisable. Being able to play with the shapes at this stage is my favourite part as it all comes together very quickly, which makes a nice change for animation since it usually takes forever. For this character glitch, I added an in-between frame here just to bridge the gap and make the movement a touch smoother. You don't always need to do this, but I felt the difference between the two drawings was a bit extreme. In the holds I'm going to add in a blink or two and just keep playing it through and adjusting until I'm happy with it. 
and once that's done I'll add some colour. I'm using the sketch layer to work out where everything goes and being very rough with the filled stroke just to lay down some basic shapes. I've got a few different layers which I merge when I need to and after a little bit of clean up with a round brush I'm ready to move on to the glitch. Since the colours for the normal frame are quite muted I thought it'd be good to use something bright that would emphasise the glitch. The colours are inspired by the short called I'm Fine Thanks by Eamon O'Neill which has some really great animation in it. It's about 4 minutes long and there's a bit of swearing and some cartoon violence if that sort of thing bothers you. It's a good short though, one of my absolute favourites and I'll leave a link to it in the description if you're interested. I use the fill stroke tool to highlight the character and once they're all filled in I then lock the transparency of the layer and change the colours to fill in the different parts of the character. I am doing this very quickly, you can be a bit more careful with this than I am and even neaten up the edges, add some texture or shadows if you want to later. I decided to use a different skin colour for each of the drawings to make them stand out even further from the original. Whether the colours are complementary or look really awful and make you want to scratch out your eyes, it's a good way to experiment with the glitch. After those frames were done, I duplicated the normal frames with the blink and added it after the glitch. I then played the animation through and fixed a couple of things like adding in the pupils I'd missed in one of the glitch frames and making the closed eyes in the blink a black line instead of white as it didn't look right to me. Now I'm pretty happy with how it looks but there are a couple of ways I can alter this. The first way is that I can duplicate the original layer and cut up the glitches using the selection tool. The second way is that I can duplicate the original again and copy and paste the frames from the cut up layer onto the duplicate so it looks like this. Whether you duplicate layers, cut out sections and move them, change the colour or the size, in the end it all comes down to personal preference and what kind of look you want to achieve with your animation. As always, if you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, suggestions or make anything after watching this, leave a comment down below and I would love to check out what you do. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and I'll be back with another video real soon. Bye!